from Home Team 19 and Home Team 43 News. Welcome back. Breaking news to report. News conference underway right now at the Medina County Fairgrounds. Let's go right there now and take a listen. The police department and other state agencies and Chief Hertnick can describe the injuries, the number of injuries and so forth. Uh, he'll give you that description now. We, uh, counties, EMS services and helicopters transported 49 total victims, not including the three that were dead on the scene on our arrival. Uh, the injuries range from minor burns to major burns and shrapnel injuries. Uh, there were ages ranging from the very young to, to babies and strollers to the very old. Um, like the sheriff said, we're, we're conducting a thorough investigation. The investigation is not near complete. It's probably just in the infancy of, of being started. Uh, we probably won't have a report for, for days, maybe weeks, on exactly uh, how this incident occurred or why this incident occurred. Uh, the, uh, the vehicle itself uh, that exploded was removed from the scene. Uh, that is in a safe area at this time where it will be held uh, so that it could be gone through to scientifically determine uh, what exactly may have happened. We have recovered shrapnel as far as 390 feet from the site uh, as, uh, as we speak now. Uh, a lot of uh, personal items have been recovered and all of those things have been secured. Uh, and. Uh, uh, as far as the safety of the fairgrounds at this point, the area has been scanned uh, by uh, uh, officials and directors throughout the night, all night long, uh, so that we can open the fair safely this morning, and uh, that's our intent. But as far as the safety and security of the grounds, uh, the Sheriff's Department and the City Police are handling that and the scene itself. We've treated it as a crime scene the entire night, and investigators have been working through the night uh, to accomplish their goals. Um, so I'll refer anything else that you may have uh, in regards to the fair to our fair board president. If any of you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer the questions for you. Or we'll try to with the information we have. Was anyone on the scene? Were any of you there when this happened? I was in the area when the explosion occurred. In fact, I had followed that uh, thrashing machine uh, down the street because I was actually at a store picking up some items for the uh, security committee and in fact was behind that harvester as it approached the fairgrounds. What Can you tell us if the steam like? engine needs to be inspected before it comes to the fairgrounds? Does it have to go undergo any kind of inspection before it's allowed to come on the grounds? I don't know whether that's required by the state for inspections on steam boilers or not. I have no knowledge of that. As far as we know, there's no inspections on, these, on this type of uh, implement as far as we've been able to find out. In actuality, uh, that type of machine, I mean, uh, that is something that a collector puts together and refurbishes. And so only the, the operator or the owner of that particular piece of equipment knows any of the safety problems or, or any concerns with that equipment, so it's really up to them. Uh, this, this particular equipment was driven onto the grounds, which was unusual because it's usually uh, uh, car carried onto the grounds. Would you be allowing other steam engines that are parked out there to uh do another demonstration that, like the one last night, or are they being told to uh, just be a static, a st uh, static display? We usually only have static displays. This particular, this this engine that blew up uh, was not operating on the grounds. He, in fact, had driven it on the grounds and was still coming into the grounds. So it wasn't it wasn't a function of the fair at that point. As we understand, sir, like that uh, that machine was not supposed to be where it was. It was on pavement. It should have been on the dirt road. Was it at an improper position when it exploded? Well, it was on the grounds and it was being positioned, which would be normal. Yeah. We understand it was uh, in the process of being sighted or driving on the pavement when it should have been on the officers, officers were uh, talking to the individual about driving on the streets with it, and that's about all we'd comment on for that. Those two officers were hurt at the time? Those two officers are also injured and are in the hospital. As far as injuries are concerned, do you know how many people still have life-threatening injuries? Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, no, we, don't, we don't, don't know those numbers today, right, this morning. Uh, we know there was there was numerous that were very serious injuries. We're looking at approximately 49 people that were actually injured uh, that we can account for at this point. We may have further today that that actually walked out that we were unaware of, but we know at least 49 that were injured at this point. In light of the four that were killed and the 49 injured, why are you opening the fair with this dark cloud over this event? 
Dave? Uh, the board met last night and came to a decision that we should continue on. Why? We would almost ask the same question, why not? Uh, it's, it's a situation that's very unfortunate, certainly. And uh, it, it's, a, uh, it, it's a limited area of the grounds. It hasn't, it, it's nothing that is going to operate as far as uh, the wrongful safety of the fair go or anything like that. There's a lot of planning that goes into putting on this fair, and uh, we want people to be able to come and enjoy the fair for the week. This is a very unfortunate incident that has occurred, and our hearts go out to those families for that. So Help someone understand who isn't who used to this kind of fair why you would uh, maybe not shut it down the first day just in honor of those who died or just to um, give people a breather from this devastating thing that happened. Dave? Okay. Uh, a lot of the, the livestock here, we're still going to have to have people here regardless of what goes on, because we still have to take care of what's here. And, uh, and, uh, and last night, the board felt that we should go on. I think we'd be honoring those families by continuing with the fair as opposed to canceling a fair or a fair day because of it. Those people were a part of our fair. Uh, the people that have died have been close to many of us on this board. And uh, it, a lot of those reasonings go into the same reason for having the fair continue and go on. Would you tell us a little bit about uh, and some of the other people that you worked with these people before. Yeah, I don't want to go into it in, in too much detail. Uh, you know, Dave Bertram, our board president, uh, knows those gentlemen even better than I uh, because he was close to them uh, in the antique power. Dave? Um, they were great supporters of the fair. They do a lot of the things behind the scene as well as they took great pride in bringing those engines to the fairgrounds for display. Uh, that was their pride and joy. They, they just loved to sh show that equipment off so people could see what had transpired over the years in the way of development of equipment. Any hey, you history say you of still... a maintenance problem with that particular engine that I, you are aware of? I have no we don't know that anything. yet, and we won't know until uh, we get involved with the people that put it together mm -hmm. and talk to them. So we really can't answer that. Would well, you say it take... to the fairgrounds in the past? That. We're not, we, we don't think so. Uh, that's usually been carried on in a car hauler, on a vehicle hauler. Sheriff, you say it will take about charges at all in this? No, no. I don't see where there'll be any charges against anybody. In you say it will take several days or weeks to... Who would you be bringing in to determine what caused the explosion and how would that be done? Can you enlighten us in any way on that? Of what caused the explosion on a steam engine? We're going to try to contact some people who have the expertise in this type of equipment and uh, have them go over the equipment, and hopefully they'll be able to tell us something about it. Is that primarily what the investigation will be, talking to experts, or what else will you have to do in the next several days or weeks? Uh, there's going to be numerous things we're going to be doing besides that. We're going to be trying to find witnesses who may have been in there, who left on their own. Uh, we're going to try and find any information at all in fact, basically, uh, we'll handle as any other major investigation. We'll, uh, we'll just leave nothing unturned that, that we can possibly humanly do. We'll do everything we can to find out the information. Well, there the being kind of can you comment to on those, uh, what happened last year with the E. coli? I'm sorry. Any you? kind of modification to the procedure as to whether or not you let this kind of equipment continue to go to the fair? We'll have to sit down and review what the sheriff comes up with and, and make a determination from there. We haven't had time to think about that one. These you steam engines are probably at every fair in Ohio, uh, as far as any fair I've ever been to, uh, you see this type of a steam engine at it. In fact, I believe there are even steam engine shows in Ohio where they focus just strictly on uh, steam engines. Uh, so it, it's a piece of equipment that's a part of the heritage of the of the original agriculture people in our in our area. So it's 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 not an unusual piece of equipment. It's something that's been with us for years and years. Can you tell Can you us how many years this particular engine has been a part of the fair? We don't know. How, uh, we couldn't tell you how many years this particular engine has been there. But as the sheriff said, I mean, uh, this is a piece of equipment that in fact is a steam-driven uh, uh, threshing machine, and it's it's a part of our heritage. 
But considering its age, was there ever any concern about its safety? Well, this you can handle. There is a couple of these engines that have actually been used on a farm in this community, in this county this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had people tell us that they were using it uh, on the farm to try it out. Whether this is one of them, I'm not sure on that yet. We will know shortly. With what happened last year with the E. coli, can you comment on whether that was part of your decision to keep the fair open uh, today? And uh, are you concerned that the, the two events in two years might uh, distort the, the reputation of the fair? We're concerned, but the E. coli had nothing to do with this event. And also, these are, the E. coli, this explosion, was really something that was out of the hands of, of anybody, whether it be you, whether it be the fair board. It's just, yeah. it's amazing and incredible that it happened to us here. And, and it's something that, that's uh, been difficult on everyone in Medina County. Uh, we've also lost one of our strongest uh, members here who died uh, um, just a few uh, weeks back in, in Kenny Albright. So. We've taken some direct hits here at this fair, and, but the people of Madani County are very, very strong people, and uh, I think you're going to see that the people of this county want to continue moving. Yeah, we've been knocked down, but we're not down to stay, and we'll get back up and we'll keep moving. Are there any memorial plans for the victims' families? We haven't had time to think about that. I'm sure it's something the fair board will discuss and the community will discuss. Because most of us sitting here were friends of these men who died at the scene. Uh, we, we all knew them, and we associated with them. So uh, it's, it's not only a professional job we're doing, but it's very personal to each one of us sitting here. I understand two of the injured were two Medina City policemen. That's it, I believe they're both now at Akron Children's. Is that correct? Any other uh, conditions? Yeah, they're both in hospitals in Akron, but I don't have an update yet this morning. Gentlemen, do you feel confident enough in the safety of this fair to bring your families here today? My family will be here today. My family will be here. Mine is here. And is it, is it, did the uh, delays last night uh, delay any of the startup today? I mean, will everything be able to start on time at 9 o'clock? Uh, Dave, you want to come in on that? Uh, probably we'll have a slight delay because we had uh, to wait to other. We had to get the rides in before we could get some of the other concessionaires set up. We are backing up entries and we are allowing late entries to come in because we had to cancel some entries last night for some of the exhibitors and things like that uh, because our concern was too many people on the grounds and too many things going on. So uh, we'll honor those timetables. To the detective, could you again describe what it was like when it, it, this exploded? It, it, was a, it, was a, it was a sound you'll never forget. I mean, it was a very serious explosion. We knew immediately when it happened that something was wrong. And uh, uh, everyone and everyone, including all fair directors and officials, all law enforcement and fire personnel, immediately headed to, the, to that area. And it was very visible to what happened. It was very devastating. Describe it for us, sir, that, that what you saw from the shrapnel and uh, whatever else might have fallen been apparent after the explosion. It would take you back to Vietnam, sir. Sheriff, do you guys know what path, uh, first of all, whose who's machine it was and what path they, they brought, you know, what path they took to bring it here? We, uh, in talking with the officers, we know about, yes, where it came from and, and uh, not far from here, where, how it got here. And uh, this is why the Medina police officers were there. Of course, they had they were talking to the operator of the vehicle about driving on the uh, the roadways, which it was illegal for this type of equipment to do. Did it just come down to Smith? Yes. Yeah. Have, have you determined who was the owner? I'm not sure. I'm, we think we know, but not enough to stay here this morning. And was it the only steam engine in the exhibit? It wasn't, no. No, there's... There's other ones there. There's other ones there. there. I think there's, what, three more? Three more. I believe there's three more there. But it's the only one of it, its kind? No, there's a... There's another one almost identical to it, sitting right behind it, just maybe just a hair smaller, mm -hmm. but the same make, same style, sitting there also. Will they continue to be on display and open to the public at all? That area of the ground is going to be closed temporarily. 
to allow the sheriff to complete this investigation. And they won't move them to anywhere else to exhibit them? They'll stay there in the Cordendorf area? They'll stay there. And have you learned from those operators what could have caused a steam engine like that to explode? They were the operators that lost their lives. But I mean, the, the operators of the... Oh, they the owned those the also. Are also the operators yes. Of the ones that yes. We lost, we lost the expertise last okay. night. I'm sorry? Do you know how the other three engines were brought on the ground? Uh, they, they were carried in. Okay. And did you say that this one is usually carried in, but today, yesterday, it was, it was driven in? Correct. Can you tell us about Deputy Conwell? Was he actually saved by wearing a bulletproof vest? Uh, he's a police officer with the city of Medina, and uh, I know that uh, several of our officers from our department did visit with both of those officers last night at the hospital, and, and it is believed that both officers were saved by their vests. There was shrapnel actually embedded in some of the vests. Some of the burn and, and uh, peppering from the explosion had gone all the way around the vest, and the vest had pretty much left a pattern on them. So, Where exactly is the steam engine now? Where was it taken? We have it in custody uh, so that the Sheriff's Department and uh, investigators can look over that. So. Was there any indication of all... You've been listening to a news conference in Medina County, officials talking about the explosion that happened yesterday. Four people were killed, 49 people injured, including two police officers. Officials there describing the scene as a sound they'll never forget, saying it sounded like Vietnam. We'll have another update at 7.55. This has been a special report from Home Team 19 and Home Team 43 News.